Section 7.5 is on solving trig equations. So this process is very similar to solving algebraic equations. We use the exact same rules and techniques. We're just using trig equations instead. Um, just like in algebraic solutions, there's often more than one answer. Um, the same is going to be true for trig functions, especially because they are periodic, meaning they repeat on themselves and they hit the same values over and over and over again. So um, when a variable is not restricted, we get more than one solution. Um, when we do restrict a variable, we limit it to certain quadrants, and that tells us which answers we keep and which ones we throw out. So what we do is we look at our all-star trig class, and for sine, we want to say which two adjacent quadrants for sine does it get all the positive and all its negative values? Well, it gets all its positive values in the first quadrant and all its negative values in the fourth quadrant, and those two quadrants are adjacent. So it gets positive values, quadrant one, negative values, quadrant two, uh, or I'm sorry, quadrant four, and that's between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees. Likewise, tangent hits all its positive and negative values in quadrant 1 and in quadrant 4. Cosine, on the other hand, hits all its positive values in quadrant 1 and in quadrant 2. So its, um, its restrictions lie between 0 and 180. So what we have here are what are called principal values. Principal values. And these are the values where we restrict x to when we're solving for sine and cosine in tangent um, in order to make sure we get all the positive solutions and all of the negative solutions. So here's an example of how to solve a trig function. This, or a trig equation. This says solve 2 sine squared x plus sine x minus 1 equals 0 for the principal values of x. So I want to think to myself, well, this is talking about sine. Sine x, we said, had principal values in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. So we are going to restrict our values of x within those parameters. Um, so before we want to solve this, we just want to think about it algebraically. Let's, um, let's make y equal to sine x, and let's just rewrite this without trig functions. This is just saying... 2y squared plus y minus 1 equals 0. Well, that's just a regular quadratic, which you know how to factor. So you can factor this into 2y and y, 1 and 1. This is negative, which means your signs inside your parentheses need to alternate, 1 minus 1 positive. And if I uh, foil this out and check, I should end up with my same solution. So my first terms give me 2y squared, my last terms give me plus 2y, my inner terms give me minus y, that gives me positive y, and then my last terms multiplied give me negative 1. So that's just quick algebra review. So now all I can do is just substitute in every time I see y, I can substitute in sine x, and that's how I would factor that equation. This equation factors into 2 sine x minus 1 times sine x plus 1 equals 0. And now I know how to solve these. I need to set each of these parentheses equal to 0 and solve for x. So I have 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0 and sine x plus 1 equals 0. On the left-hand side, I move the 1 over and divide by 2 and I get sine x equals 1 half. On this next one, I just move the 1 over, and I get sine x equals negative 1. So I need to ask myself, where is sine x 1 half? Where is sine x negative 1 in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2? Remember, I'm restricting myself from negative 90 degrees to positive 90 degrees. So when I look at my quadrant here, I'm from here to here in my unit circle basically. This is the point down here, 0, negative 1. 
this is the point up here, 0, positive 1. So I want to ask myself, when is sine in that interval negative 1? Well, sine is negative 1 when x equals negative 90 degrees, down here on that value. I also want to ask myself, when does sine equal 1 half? Well, sine equals 1 half in my 30, 60, and 90 triangle. Um, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Coming from my 30 degrees, opposite over hypotenuse is 1 half. So when x equals 30 degrees, sine is 1 half. Notice sine is positive here. Sine of 1 half is positive. So my 30 degrees is falling in this first quadrant. I'm not 30 degrees in quadrant 4 because that would be negative. So my two solutions for this problem are 30 degrees and negative 90 degrees. Here's another example. Solve sine squared x minus sine x plus 1 equal to cosine squared x. And now I'm in the interval between 0 and 2 pi. So now I'm in every quadrant starting at 0 and going to 2 pi. I include 0. I do not include 2 pi because I'd just be counting that value twice because 0 and 2 pi are the same thing. So what I want to do is I want to rewrite this using only cosine. So, or I'm sorry, using only sine. So I have sine, sine, and cosine. I want to rewrite that cosine to just have sines. So I'm going to use my identity, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1, and I'm going to solve for si cosine. Cosine squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to substitute it in there for cosine. So now I have, let me change colors, now I have sine squared x minus sine x plus 1 equal to 1 minus sine squared x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move everything to one side so I can get my equation equal to 0. So on, from this side I'm going to subtract 1 and I'm going to add sine squared x. So I'm going to add sine squared x here. I'm going to subtract 1. So what I'm left with over here, I have 2 sine squared x. I have minus sine x. I have minus 1 plus 1. That goes away, and I have 0. So I want to ask myself, what do I do from here? From here, I want to say, well, each of these terms, these are two separate terms, one term, two terms, they each contain at least one sine. So I'm going to factor out one sine from both of those. I'm going to take the sine x out, and I'm going to ask from each term, what am I left with? From this first term, I'm left with 2 sine x. From the last term, I'm just left with a 1 equals 0. Now I can set up two equations equal to 0. I'm going to say I have sine x equals 0, and I have 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0. And I'm going to solve these both. Sine x equals 0 is already solved. Um, on the right here, I'm going to take the 1 to the other side and divide by 2. So I'm going to have sine x equals positive 1 half. So I need to ask myself, between 0 and 2 pi, where does sine equal 0? Where does sine equal 1 half? Well, I need to look at my four points around my unit circle. This is the point um, 1, 0. This is the point 0, 1 negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. Remember that sine is y, and I want to know where is this, where are my y values equal to 0. My y values are equal to 0 here and here. Those are the points 0 and pi. I'm giving my answer in radians because it gave me my um, restrictions in radians. Then I want to figure out, where is sine 1 half? Well, I can remember from the previous problem, or I can draw my 30, 60, 90 triangle over here. And I remember that for 30 degrees, sine opposite over hypotenuse is 1 half. So this is 30 degrees, and I need to know I'm positive. So I need to figure out, where are my positive values? My positive values for sine happen in the first quadrant, and they happen in the second quadrant. In the first quadrant, my 30-degree angle is pi sixth. 
In the second quadrant, my 30 degree angle is 5 pi 6. You can refer back to your unit circle if you need a refresher on those fractions. Okay, so let's say that question had asked you to solve for all real values of x as opposed to um, restricting you to the domain of 0 to 2 pi. So now we're talking about repeating that iteration over and over and over again, how many times you're going to hit these values. Well, you're going to hit them an infinite number of times. Um, so how do you write that? So we want to say sine of 0, we said sine was 0 at 0 and at pi. Sine is going to re-hit that 0 at every iteration of 360 degrees or 2 pi. So we're going to say 0 plus 2 pi k is a solution and pi plus 2 pi k is a solution because it's hitting those solutions every time it rotates. k again is just a constant or the number of rotations. So if it rotated around 6 times, it would be 0 plus 12 pi. Same thing for pi or for 1 half. We said sine is 1 half for pi 6 every 30 degrees. So it's going to hit that 30 degrees at every 2 pi k intervals. Sine is also positive 1 half at pi, 5 pi 6, and it's going to hit that at positive 2 pi k intervals. So you're still you're picking out the same solutions. Where is sine 0? Where is sine positive 1 halves? Well, it's positive 1 halves at pi 6 and 5 pi 6, and you're just adding around one full rotation. If it had asked you for it in degrees, you might say, well, this is 0 plus 360 degrees K. This is pi plus 360 degrees K. This is um, 30 degrees plus 360 degrees K. And for 5 pi 6, that would be, um, what's the, 150 degrees plus 360 degrees K. The only difference here is if you're working with tangent, because the period for tangent is pi as opposed to 2 pi, you might say 0 plus pi k or 180 degrees k because tangent's period is pi, whereas sine and cosine have a period of 2 pi, so you would do 2 pi k or 360 k. This, my friends, was voted one of the most important mathematical equations of all time. It is a beautiful, beautiful thing. It says e to the i pi equals negative 1. It involves Euler's constant, which is e. It involves imaginary numbers, which is i. It involves pi, which is the uh, ratio of the diameter of, a cir uh, diameter of a circle to its circumference. And it involves negative 1. So it was voted the most um, most impressive equation because of the elements that it utilized. So yay, math is fun!